Okay. Don't shoot the messenger, but I don't particularly think this is great news. Now, in my last video, I did say in those comments, if you guys were watching, that I had some juicy gossip for you guys. I never said it was good, but I said there was something there. And this is what this video is addressing. And as you can probably see by the title, we're in for a bit of a ride in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. So let's get straight into the video. Now, of course, there was an interview with the Mountain Blade 2 founder, developer, the guy behind everything, Armagon. Now, this is the big guy at the top that we all know and love for creating this amazing game. But our friend Armagon was talking to PC Powerplay about the state of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, some extra information, and, uh, yeah, something at the very end that I'm going to talk about a little bit myself. There was a lot of talk of onions in there. Don't know how related that was. It's kind of describing the way that they're building Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Onions, nonetheless. But he also talks about the army's tactics in Bannerlord, and it will kind of show you the effect of the personality behind the Lord commanding it. For example, a reckless Lord will be much more inclined to put a straightforward attack, while a really cautious Lord will be more inclined to retreat from battle or be a bit more wary with their tactics and things like that. And this is quite good because it means you're going to be able to see the personality of the Lord, not by the way they talk to you, but also by the way you fight them in battles. And that can help you prepare for other battles. Maybe other people in their family are more like them, or maybe, you know, it kind of creates a sort of picture of what the type of people you're fighting against that can help prepare for that. They're talking about the quibble the players had with the end game in Warband was that once your empire was overwhelmingly powerful, dispatching the last of your opposition became tiresome. So how are they going to fix this? How are they going to make the end game for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord a bit more enticing for the players? Because I did feel that myself. You kind of got to the point in Warband where you were just a god. You had everything. Nothing could stop you. So how are they going to fix that? Well, he's talking about once an enemy has run out of resources and power, it's much more difficult for them to put up a fight. Yeah, that kind of doesn't really explain it too much, but I think what he's trying to go with is that once you've kind of taken down most of the army, a lot of them are just going to retreat, they're going to kind of get away, and you kind of basically destroy them once you've taken out their main armies, and of course economy, because that's going to be a big point of Mountain Blade 2. Bannerlord. And there's also some talk, he said, this is a quote from him, it will certainly be possible to play as something like a merchant, for example, without necessarily being part of the political battle, in a sense. Now this is interesting, because we've never really had that opportunity at Mountain Blade, and especially in Bannerlord, being able to play as a merchant is something very different. Not something I would personally do, but of course I'm sure there are many people out there that don't really want to get involved in the whole battles and all the Lord commanding. So it's going to be really nice that they've added that in. Now, this is where it gets onto the part of the video that I don't want to talk about. Okay, so we all know everyone's been wanting a release date for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. It's kind of been in the works for a long, long time. I think it was for announced back in 2012, and everyone's kind of been getting a little bit angry. But we all know what Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord say. They want to bring out a finished product. They want everything that they're happy with, and they want to be extremely, you know, satisfied with what they've created. That's why it's been taking so long, and they're saying that they don't even have a release date because they're so intent on getting a game out that they are perfectly happy with. This confuses me, though, the last bit of this article, the last bit of this interview. Because just before he says, we're not happy with half-baked solutions, which is basically what I just said, they're not happy with releasing it half done. And then it goes on, the end of the interview says, Armagon told us that there is a good chance that the game will be sold via early access and that such a paid beta scheme could even launch this year. Now me personally, I don't have a massive problem with early access. That's not a big problem for me because of course if a game goes into early access it's great for small developers to get more money. I don't think Tailwoods need the extra money. It feels like they're doing this just because the players have been asking for it so much. I personally don't have a massive problem because I trust Tail Wars are going to get the game out that they want. Even if it goes into early access, it's still going to be a pretty much, you know, I don't want to say full game, but on the way there, and they're going to get there in the end. But I know a lot of people are not going to like this. People hate early access for the very reason that it's kind of deceptive for the audience a lot of the time. Yes, there are some success stories with this. For example, Space Engineers and Rust. These have been extremely successful games. These have got a lot of money and a lot of player base that still play it to this day. And I think the same would happen with Bannerlord. 
But at the same time, there's so many disaster stories with early access. Daisy, for example. That was the prodigy's son of survival games, and down the drain it went because of early access. They brought out a game that was less than even slightly finished. Early access is something I did not think they would do, but it doesn't make sense to me that they've gone on for so long saying how they want to get out the finished product, and that they want it to not be a half-baked solution, and then saying that the game has a good chance of being sold via early access? Because I'm pretty sure that means it's not a full product. That means it's the early versions of the game that they're selling out to people. Now, I've got very mixed emotions, as you might be able to tell, but I really want to hear what you guys have to say. What do you guys think about banning all game to early access? Is this such a bad thing? Am I overreacting a bit, or have I kind of got my words mixed up? I might be looking at this from the wrong angle. Please correct me down in the comments if I have. Because from my angle, what it looks like is that they're saying just before we're not happy with half-baked solutions, and then Armagon says there's a good chance that the game will be sold via early access. So, you know, very, very confusing stuff there. But I'd love to hear what you have to say. So make sure you leave it down in the comments below. But if, like me, you love a Lord news and you love getting it as soon as possible, make sure you follow this channel because I'll be bringing it out as soon as it comes. And of course, we'll get all that other juicy news in. We've got some Age of Empires stuff coming very soon. But until then, I will see you in the next one.